Hey everybody, we're back again. A new month, a new box. My name is Kevin and this I'm is... Jason. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. And this month, we're really excited about... Yes. South Korea. We're really excited about this. Awesome. I thought we were going to play the whole video. No, we're not going to play that whole video. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. South Korea, Universal Young Box. Super excited about it. I'm not excited that I have to read the whole thing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, again, these it. boxes come with lots and lots of information about the country, or just half of the country. <laughs> And we're going to skip a lot because the video went really long last time. So we're just going to kind of just jump right into it. Can we just like show, like read a little part of it? We'll just read a little part of it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh look, he's a baby. At birth, babies in South Korea are considered wiser than the elderly, I'm guessing. No. Where the answer's at. No! No! I don't want it. My mouth is gonna be in pain. Okay, so these snacks, like I said, are from South Korea. Here, put the scorecard over there. You can take the pen. First one is Takbaki snack. snack. Yeah. Takbaki snack? Yeah. Takbaki snack. We have no idea. Alright, well, anyway, so here, Jason, you hold it up and I'm gonna read this one. Hopefully, I don't hold up the wrong thing again. Nope. Not gonna happen. All right, so it says freeze. You've been caught red-handed in the best way possible. The red snack in your hand comes from the famously bright red South Korean dish, tteokbokki. I think I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Get out of my face. <laughs> Which means stir-fried rice cakes. It might not sound appetizing based on the name, but during the Joseon Dynasty, 1392 to 1897, this dish was so special, it was called Gunjin Tabaki, or Peace Tabaki, Tukbaki, and only served to royals. Whoa. Alright, dude, we get to eat, like, the kings. I'm a king! Ha ha ha! Alright, here's our scissors. Open it up. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is going to be good, spicy, or I'm going to have to get out the seat to go get milk. Well, we're about to find out. Ooh, smell it. it smells like pepper. It smells like what? It smells like pepper and salt. Pepper and salt. All right, that's mine. I don't, I don't really have a good feeling about this. It kind of looks like a noodle. Yeah. It looks like a noodle. Noodle. Yeah. Hollow. Okay, okay. I see you. All right, you ready? Eat it, come on. Oh god, it's starting to kick in. Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> it's really not that spicy. I mean, there is spice in there. I kind of get a sweet taste. Oh, wait, there's a. Oh god. There's that spice. Oh my god. But that gets you right in the back of the throat. Jesus. Oh. My mouth, I can't put my tongue. No, it's not that spicy, but it hurts. Pretty good, though. You can feel it. I forgot a knife. You gonna read about the second one? No, oh, I can't read my mouth. Come on. Green tea choco pie. I'm not really excited about this one. The amazingness of choco pie can't be contained. Literally, this is famous choc chocolate covered marshmallow filled with cake managed to traverse one of the most dangerous borders in the world, the one between South and North Korea. Since the 1970s, the choco pie has been beloved, beloved by North and South Koreans alike. At one point, they were even given to North Korean factories laborers as bonuses, as work bonuses, instead of cash. Over time, however, Choco Pie, Choco Pie Black Market, Black Market, Black Market, formed in North Korea, even when the country's leaders caught, when, when they banned the treat out, so, 
out of fear it would have become a symbol of capitalism. That's good. That literally looks like a moon pie. <laughs> I was thinking the same damn thing. That literally looks like a moon pie. Just for reading, it's a marshmallow? Yeah, it's got marshmallow. Hold moon on. pies have marshmallow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you this. What does it smell like? It smells like a moon pie. A little bit. Or just a little minty. Right. Look, it looks like a moon pie, and then it looks like a mint. But okay. it's green tea. <laughs> You're braver than I am. Mmm. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> That's amazing. I can literally eat this daily. I did not expect green tea and marshmallow and chocolate to work. But it works. It's delicious. It definitely works. Want to last week? Yes. Mm. Mm, that's what I'm eating. Alright. Oop. That's how I forgot to. Alright, the first one, what do we got? Mm, second? I'm going to mm. Because it was? It was alright. Mm. So I'm going to go with second. Alright, so the next one. Now this one looks the best. Chaco Hine. Oh. oh, thank you. I'm actually kind of excited about this one. <clears throat> if you were with us the last time we went to South Korea, you might remember this hazelnut cream filled wafer. Oh, neat. It was voted one of the favorites in that box. It's easy to see why, as it's crispy, creamy, and totally dreamy. It's so close to perfect that we took on the impossible challenge of finding something even just a little wrong with it. At first we thought maybe there was too much vanilla wafer and not enough chocolatey hazelnut cream, but we gave it another taste and boy we were wrong. There's just enough of the crunchy wafer to house the ooey gooey goodness on the inside. Alright dude. You open it, I'll cut it. I couldn't get it up. Um. <gasps> Not joking, this literally looks like a Kit Kat without the chocolate. Kill me. If it looks like a Kit Kat, I'm going to take the first bite. Oh, it looks like a Kit Kat with textures. A, a nuts. Kit Kat inside out. Like a, an inside out Kit Kat. A Kit Kat without pieces. Like it. I don't want to break into a bunch of different pieces. Kit Kat. Oh wow, that cut, that sounded like a cut. Oh, I'm getting this. Hold on, look at that. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> oh wow. It has the chocolate of a Kinder Egg and the crunchiness of a Kit Kat. Kinder Egg. It's delicious. That is really good. You want to say go to two for tomorrow? Yes. Awesome. All right, dude. Your I'm turn. Eating. Oh, I'm in front of food. I can't wait till next one. Get the next one. No, you can't. <laughs> Let's get this one out of the way. Almond pepperon. Pepperon. At eleven eleven, many people stop to make a quick wish, but in South Korea, the number signifies something a little different. Pepero Day. Every November 11th, South Korea South Korea celebra celebrates, celebrates. <laughs> the holidays by giving a, by giving loved ones these crunchy chocolate coated sticks. How did this quirky tradition start? Some people point to, to a 1983 news story about two girls at South at South Korean middle school who exchanged Pepero Pepperon, in hopes that the slim-looking snack would make make them become tall and thin. Others think the holiday was born because a stick. Don't open it yet. I'm gonna open it. It's, it's a package in a package. I give up. I I want to eat it. Where were you at? I think the holiday was born because a stick of pepperon resembles the number one, hence eleven eleven, and some think it's a combination of the two. There you go. Take the box. No, come on, bag. come on. You're wasting time. Killing me. Dying on the inside. Hold on. 
Yeah, that wafer, yeah, put that in one of the best. The best. So we have two of the best and one of the oh, second Oh, good god. Oh, wow. I can they see. all stuck together. It's Pocky! Yeah, that's what it's I'm... It's Pocky! Oh my gosh! Oh, damn it. Well, that's a piece of mine. I can take it. Oh my gosh. He smells so good. Uh, I got him break right. Come on, man. It's good. Put it down. Yeah. That's really good chocolate. It's not like super sweet, but it's really good. Perfect. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I right. like that one. Yeah. All right, next one. You have to eat it. There's nothing, <clears throat> excuse me, there's nothing controversial about a strawberry, right? Guess again, during the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, an athlete on Japan's female curling team was photographed eating one when she described the, stra the strawberry as surprisingly delicious. At a press conference, she reignited a decades-old debate between Japan and South Korea. Japanese officials claimed the strawberries were rightfully theirs as they brought the first strawberries to South Korea. But South Koreans claim they worked hard to create a new blend of these Japanese varieties. One that both super delicious and entirely their own. <laughs> I heard Japan was like, yes. Alright. Ow, in my arm. Don't you touch it. <laughs> Take it. I had to rip it. You rip it. Oh, it's like in the package, it's like candy. It this is candy. Is... <laughs> oh yeah, it is candy. Wait, hold on, why does this oh, kind of... No, 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 